Hello, I am Justin. Welcome back to Blender Frenzy Quarantine Series. Last time we talked about adding and adjusting a point light and then adding a shader to our toilet paper object so it has a little bit of shading on it. But we want to add a little bit more realism and that is with a normal map. Well, what is a normal map, you ask? Well, that's what this thing is. Wait, am I pointing? I'm not pointing. This thing is right here, this blue multicolored texture. And um, so you can see uh, this is the original texture that we used for our toilet paper roll. And then right next to it, we have the normal map. And what this is going to do when we combine these two things together in Blender, it's going to add a little bit of a bumpy texture so the surface won't look so flat or smooth. Now, I know this normal map may look a little bit weird with these colors, but don't worry, it's not going to actually display the colors. It's just using those colors to calculate the lighting in such a way where our surface looks like it has little grooves and dents in it. So to give you a preview of what that will look like in Blender is here is our object, our toilet paper roll with no normal map applied to it yet. Uh, it's just a flat surface there, you can see, with some shading. But now uh, I'm just going to go ahead and en enable the normal map here. And now you can see that it has the illusion of little bumps and grooves as if it has a whole bunch of geometry creating those bumps and grooves but it is still flat so if i enable my overlays here and then go into edit mode i can see that i don't have any extra geometry if i just go into solid shading mode you can see everything is still flat so the normal map is so cool because you don't have to add geometry and it looks like you have so much more so let's go back into rendered mode and overlays and let me show you I'll just turn those on and off here see this is before and then after and you can see going back and forth like that the flat versus the bumpy and the awesome thing about normal maps is that they react dynamically to moving light so if I select my light here and I rotate that on the Z oh I've got to get out of edit mode so let's tab out of edit mode select our light and then rotate that on the Z. You can see as I rotate around, you can see the bumps in the texture light up and go dark at different times or at a different rate, just like normal light would as it passes over a bumpy surface. Now contrast this with the flat. So here's our flat, and then let's take our light and then rotate that. Now you can see the surface is just being lit and darkened evenly. So that is the end result. That's what we are going to make today. So let's go ahead and go back into the blend file here where we left off last time. And you can see that we have our texture plugged into a diffuse shader, which is the standard non-glossy surface shader. And then it's plugged into the material output. That, that way we can see it in the viewport display up here. And you can see our diffuse shader actually comes with a normal input. And this is what we're going to use after we create the normal map. So to create the normal map, let's open up a new instance of Blender. And I'm just going to delete the default cube, go into top mode, add in a plane and zoom in here, go into wireframe mode up here, and you can see that if we tab into edit mode, we only have one face and four edges and four vertices. Now we're gonna need a lot more geometry than this because we want to elevate the light areas of our image. So I'm gonna tab back out into object mode, go to our modifiers, add modifier and subdivision surface. I want to keep the square shape, so I'm going to click Simple over here, and then bring the Render and Viewport options up to 3. Then I'm going to click Copy, and that's just going to multiply these here. So it's got two of them. And then I'm going to make this 5 and this 5. Okay, and you got to be careful with this step because the first time I did this, I put these up to 6 before I copied, and then I click Copy. And then of course it's multiplying them together, making two of them, and uh, it just, my computer couldn't handle it and it crashed. Just be mindful of how much geometry you're adding at the same time, because depending on your system, 
it might not be able to handle it. But now you can see we've got a whole bunch of geometry, lots of different faces and edges and, and points to work with here. Okay, so I'm going to collapse these here because we want to add in one more modifier, and that is our displace modifier. And this is what we're going to use to elevate some of the faces in our geometry. So it requires a texture. Now I could create one here, but I'm going to have to come to the texture tab anyway. So I'm just going to do that. Go up to new, click new. And I'm not going to rename it because I'm not even going to save this blend file because it's going to be pretty easy. So I'm just going to come and open our texture 03 that we have been using for our toilet paper roll. Now you can see already something is happening. So if I rotate out and around our object, you can kind of start to see what's happening. I'm going to go back into solid shading mode, and you can see that all of the black areas of our image are not raised up at all. They're completely flat. But as the color gets lighter, so from black to white, it raises that geometry. But this is way too much. So let's come back over to our modifiers tab and will bring down the strength. Now that goes pretty fast, so you can hold shift to have a little bit more control over that. And I think maybe around 0.3 or 4 will work. I think I'm gonna go 0.3 here, like that. And this is personal preference, but I think this is all I need. So if I zoom in here, you can see uh, we've got just enough elevation and bumpiness here to use for our normal map. So I'm going to go back into the top mode and zoom out a bit. And now we're ready to create the actual normal map. 